Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk a little bit about drawing geometric forms. The reason you want to know how to draw these really quickly as fast as you can is because sometimes whenever you're doing a gesture drawing or doing something really quickly, um, it is easier to fill in a shape with a basic geometric form and then add details to it later than it is to try and draw it in as a blob shape and then figure it out later. Um, so for example, if I were doing a very quick drawing of someone holding a soda can, uh, I want to draw that soda can starting as a cylinder because sodas are cylinders, um, rather than drawing it in as, a, as a rectangle because then if I draw it in as a rectangle, I'm just going to give myself a headache trying to figure out how to turn it into a cylinder later. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to start with probably the most basic geometric form you know of, and that is a cube. Now, 99.9% .9 chance I'm betting you've drawn a cube like this before. You've drawn a square, you've drawn another square, I have a diagonal to that one, and you've connected all the lines. Well, bye am. If you've drawn a cube like this before, awesome! You are halfway done with this cube already. Now, to make this cube solid, all you gotta remember to do is you need to erase some of your lines. Practice doing that a couple times so you can get, get used to it, figure out how to make an actual solid cube instead of something that's accidentally partially made or non-Euclidean geometry. All right, however, this cube does not work all of the time. This will work any time one side of the cube is straight towards you, and it works really great. However, if the corner of the cube is facing closest to you, this one won't work anymore. So whenever you have a cube where the corner is closest to you, here's how you're gonna start. You're gonna start by drawing the top of your cube. And you're gonna do that by drawing a squished diamond. So you can draw that diamond pretty much however you want. It looks like that, might be more wide. You could go a little bit more squished. That's also fine. You're gonna start with a diamond. Next, you're gonna draw three lines. They either need to go straight down or they need to go straight up. And you're gonna draw them from your corners. I'm gonna draw a line straight down here, draw a line straight down here, draw a line straight down there, draw a line straight up here, here, and here. There are two things you need to check with these lines. These lines need to be parallel to one another. They should all be going the same direction. You will notice very fast if something isn't parallel. In fact, I'm gonna do a little cattywampus one over here so you can see what it'll look like if you're not careful about this. So that's gonna be my incorrect example. All right, now the second thing I need to check with these guys is that they're all the same length. Now this one I did pretty good on. This one I don't think I did as good on. Yeah, this one needs to be longer. And let's make this one definitely not the same length. All right, so all parallel, all the same length. Last step to drawing the cube, attach across the bottom or the top. This should finish off my cube, but here's how I can double check that my cube looks correct. Especially if you notice that your cube looks a little funny, here's how you double check yourself. Make sure that all of your lines are parallel. That's it, that's all you gotta do. So, I need this and this to be parallel. They should be going the same direction. If they are, awesome. I need this and this to be parallel. They should be going the same direction. If they are, awesome. This and this should be parallel. They should be going the same direction. Awesome. This one and this one should be parallel and they should be going the same direction. That's gonna be awesome. Over here, my lines are not parallel. So here's how I'm gonna fix it. I noticed that this line and this line, if they continued on, are just gonna bash into one another right here. So I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna make this one the one that I'm gonna copy. I'm gonna have a parallel line there and same thing over here, it's just gonna bash in. I'm gonna make that one parallel as well. Get rid of that, get rid of this. Still doesn't quite look like a cube though, because again, this and this are not parallel. So I want to match this over here. Now that's parallel. Now over here, this and this need to be parallel and I need to match it to this corner. So it'd be like that and that should now be a perfect cube. So, cubes, pretty simple. Related to the cube is a rectangular prism. A rectangle and a cube are very related shapes, which is why whenever we're doing a rectangular prism, we 
are basically following all the same steps as a cube. What is a rectangular prism? Art hostage. Um, it's just- 3D a, what shape? Uh, it's just 3D uh, rectangle. 3D rectangle, good. So just like a cube, you can do the method by which you draw two and connect the corners. That does in fact work. And you can still erase parts of it to make it a solid one. But again, just like in a cube, that only works when one side is flat towards you. As soon as a corner is the thing closest to you, you need to do it the other way, which again is gonna start with a squished diamond. But now the squished diamond is gonna be a little stretched out. Like so. Once we stretch out that diamond, it's gonna work just fine. All right, so just like in our cube, our second step is to draw lines that either go straight down or straight up. And we're gonna draw them from the corners. All right, unlike a cube, they do not need to be a very specific length because on a cube, all of your sides are the same length. For a rectangular prism, you might have these lines be really short or they might be quite long. But just like in a cube, they need to be parallel, going the same direction, and they need to be the same length. So, same direction, same length. And then, just like a cube, connect across. And you should have your rectangular prisms. This is very good for drawing things like, I don't know, tables or the bottoms of chairs. <laughs> um, and depending on how you manipulate it, you could also turn this into essentially a truck bed, things like that. So how do I double check this one? Same exact way you double check a cube. Is this parallel to this to this? Is this parallel to this to this? As long as that is the case, you're going to have a good rectangular prism. And just like in a cube, you'll know it's wonky if the sides are not parallel. That'll help you. All right, last pointy cornered shape is gonna be a pyramid. It is related to your rectangular prism and your cube in the same way that it has a square shaped bottom. And we're going to draw it the similar way that we do our second version of a rectangular prism and a cube. We're going to start with a squished diamond. All right, so now that I've got my little squished diamonds that are the bottoms of my pyramids, the next thing I got to do is I got to find the center. I got to find the center of these because you remember the walls of your pyramid come up and they meet in the middle. So that's pretty easy to do. What you're gonna do is you're gonna find the center point of each of your sides and just put a little dot there. Now, if you have a ruler handy, then you might wanna use a ruler. If you're pretty good at eyeballing where the middle is of something, then you can do that. Or you can also take your fingers and go zoop and figure out where the middle is that way. Any of those methods work. Then connect across. Now, if you're using a pencil, just draw very lightly. I can only use markers, so I'm just doing it in a different color. Do as I say, not as I do. Now, where these two lines cross, that's going to be your center point. This is important because this, just like in our cubes, in our pr uh, rectangular prisms, this will either go straight down or it will go straight up. And that's going to tell you the orientation of your pyramid. I'm going to draw a line that comes straight down. I'm going to draw a line that goes straight up. Now, this can be a long line or it can be a short line. It's really up to you and what, uh, what you're trying to do with your pyramid. And from here, just like on our cube, we're going to draw some lines from our corners. Uh, but instead of going parallel to one another, they're all going to meet at the end of this line. Now, I'm really having four lines that I need to draw here. But once I erase all of my guidelines, I'm going to be able to see why I didn't draw the last one. This one I didn't draw. Technically, it exists. 
back here, but it's behind all the rest of my pyramid. And so I'm gonna leave it out. Same thing over here, this one exists, but I don't actually need it. In fact, over here, if I decide to erase that back half of my diamond, I don't even see the bottom of my pyramid. So depending on if you keep certain lines or delete certain lines or leave out certain lines as I did with these right here in that, in, in that back corner, I might have a solid and invisible or a like, or a hole. So you wanna play around with that and play with it a little bit and see what kinds of shapes you can do. And depending on how you manipulate these, you might end up looking at the top of your shape or the bottom of your shape, whether you're looking up at it or looking down at it. So play with that and get used to it because it's gonna be kind of awkward getting used to. Hey everybody. Uh, it's Miss C. We're back with more geometric forms. Uh, I know that it's probably the same video for you, but for me, it's the next day. Uh, be aware that there are some wild children leaving school right now. So you may or may not hear them in the background whooping, hollering, and tackling each other in the hallways. We'll figure it out. All right, so geometric forms. Our next one that we're going to look at is a cone because, frankly, a cone and a pyramid aren't that different from one another except for the shape of the bottom. For a pyramid, we had the square that was squished found its center points and came across, came up, did our lines. Um, the only difference between this and our cone is that instead of being a square, the bottom of a cone is a circle. Whenever you squish a circle, because remember a diamond's just a squish square, whenever you squish a circle, you get a circle that's been stretched out a little bit. And instead what you're gonna have is an oval. So we're gonna draw two ovals here, bam, and wa-bam. These are gonna be the bottoms of our cones. Now, just like everything else we've done, the next thing that we gotta do is draw the lines that go up and down. But just like the pyramid, we gotta find that center point first. Now, for the pyramid, we had to find the center of our sides. For these ovals, way easier. Because frankly, the centers, yeah. Split it like this. Just a simple crosshair. There's your center, bam and bam. From here, we can go, so we use the same color. We can go up however far we want. We can go down however far we want. That is crooked, so I'm gonna fix it. Watch ya. And wha bam, there we go. We now need our lines that come for our sides. And just like a pyramid, it's gonna come from our edges to the top of our line. In the case of our ovals, those are gonna be right on the sides here. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. From here, I can erase my little guidelines. That's all my green lines right here. Bam, watch out, watch out. And depending on if I wanna look at the bottom of the pyramid or the top of the cone, the bottom of the cone, um, et cetera, so on and so forth, I may or may not need to delete this line on the inside. So now I went from looking at the bottom of my cone to looking down at it. Over here, I'm looking down at my cone now I'm looking up at it. It's really that simple. Cones, super easy. Post cones. Our next shape is also going to be a round bottom shape and it's going to be a cylinder. Cylinder, just like a cone, because it is also a round bottom shape, starts with that circle that's been squished flat, i.e. oval. So let us draw one here and one here. This can be more fat, it can be more skinny, it's just gonna kinda depend at what angle you're looking at it from. If you're looking more across it, that's gonna be more squished. If you're looking more down at it, that's gonna be more wide. Now, just like our cube, just like our pyramid, just like everything else, we gotta draw some lines that go straight up or straight down. And just like our cone, they're gonna come from the sides. I'm gonna draw two that go straight down and some that come straight up. Ooh -wee. Like this. Now, here's what I see kids do incorrect on a cylinder every single time. Don't do it. See, kids think, cylinder, it's flat on bottom. And then they draw a flat bottom. Or in this case, a flat top. It looks weird. Why? 
because the bottom of the cylinder or the top of the cylinder are both circles. So the bottom down here is still a circle or an oval that matches the one above. Now, the other thing about a cylinder, I can't look at both top and bottom at the same time, literally ever. So the way that I want you to think of it is that you need to draw a curve for that other side. And that curve should match this one right here, that inside middle curve. Whatever this curve is, however bendy that is, that's how bendy this one needs to be. That simple, easy peasy. All right, so I've got my cylinder, my cylinder. Now here's the tricky one. What happens if I put my squished oval on its side? Does that change anything about my cylinder? Yes. The lines that go straight up and down normally, they now go side to side. That's it. Instead of having a cylinder that's standing up, I have a cylinder on its side. So I have that. Cylinder, super, super easy. Now, the last shape is both the most difficult to draw in 3D and the simplest is a sphere. Now, a sphere is a 3D circle. So obviously we're gonna start with a circle. But here's the thing, the only difference between a circle and a sphere, and the thing that makes it difficult, is that a sphere is shaded. That's it, that's the only difference. It's super easy, because you gotta draw a circle. It's super hard, because you gotta draw a circle. <laughs> Uh, I do have a tip for you for drawing circles, however, which is just keep going. Keep drawing where you notice you're not coming out far enough. Circle. Go a little more. You Bam. Can get a circle maker. You can get a circle maker, <laughs> but if you don't have one, just keep drawing. Just keep going. And then once you have a circle mess, you can come and be like, yeah, that part sticks out too much. This one needs to come out a little bit. Wee! And erase all the parts that are wrong. <sighs> You can get a weirdly nice circle doing this. Just keep erasing. So you can get a nice circle that way. When in doubt, just keep going. Um, all right, so that is all of your geometric forms. And uh, have at, use them wisely.